Hello everybody, welcome! We're going to be having fun, I'm saying fun in air quotes there, on Blood Bowl and Board Game. I also just realized I've got to grab my deck. So. I also just realized I didn't name it. So, let me fix that real quick. Because this is definitely not Dark Souls 2. Also, if y'all hear anything jingle behind me, that is my cat. She was got herself very, very comfortable. So what we're going to be doing today is actually, um, there is multiple campaigns. Usually he's often built around a boss. Um, there is Long Hunt, which is Cleric Beast's bot deck. Old Yarnum, which is Blood Bloodstar Beast. Secrets of the Church, which is Amelia. Growing Madness, which is Gascoigne. Uh, this is just Child's Dungeons and stuff. Birth of Madness. This would be... What's your name? Amurgo. Celestial Truth. I want to say this is Brudas. Forsaken Castle, uh, but these decks deal with actually different bosses. You actually have a choice, good chunk through this campaign. About how you want to do this. So, this Martyr's Legacy fights Annalise, and Queen's Legacy fights Ligarius. Dark Rites would be um, Witches, Den of Vipers is Shadows of Yarnum, Eldritch Truth is Rom, Unseen Village is um, One Reborn, and then these are both um, bonus chapters, and this is Hunt's End, which is Garmin slash Moon Noodle. So, I'm going to get my physical, because I have this whole game in physical, and it must be helpful for me to be able to load the decks. So, that's what I'm doing. Blood Bowl board game is a campaign based game, so there is some difference in that's going to be between this and the Dark Souls game. Hey Axon, thanks for the lurk, man. So one of the big things is these certain campaign decks. These are often 60s, 65 card decks that kind of just kind of guide you through how it works. Um, and you often hear me mess with the deck, next thing that's actually conveniently the deck I'm going to be using. Mm -hmm. So let me finish up sending up links, and we'll, we'll get going.
Um, and the um, campaign we're doing today is going to be the Cleric Beast campaign. Um, I'm I'm actually gonna be two-handing this because I hate the solo rules in this game. Thanks for the raid, Amish. So I am gonna be two-handing this because personally, um, I do prefer two-handing most games. There are a couple games I prefer soloing, pure true solo, but this is not one of them. So I'm gonna grab Long Hunt, which is Cleric Beasts. This means my life. So much easier. So. Long hunt. The monsters created by the beast play, the scourge beast, the most reviled. Once human, these terrible monstrosities are fast, agile, and lethal. As of late, more and more of these beasts have, sought, have begun appearing in central Yarnum. Thus, we have been tasked with discovering the source of their increasing numbers, as well as eliminating as many as possible. So, monster wise, uh, weapon wise. This is actually just conveniently every weapon in the main game. Only ones that are not in here are DLC weapons and saw spear. Unfortunately, um, they have double holy blade, which I really do hate, but whatever. Um, I'm only going to be using stuff that's in the core box, slash, that it would, you would have access to in the video game at this point, which is uh, one of these three. Start of weapons. In the board game, this is actually is the other weapon that's in the core box. It's the Ludwig Holy Blade. But we are going to be using Cleaver and Axe. Okay, there's my central tile. Nope, that has to be. Shift seven, oh, okay, shift eight. I'm gonna make shift eight then. So, you have a giant deck of cards. The, um, the long hunt is a sixty card deck. I actually have played um, some of these campaigns. I actually have finished these four right here. And I have finished Vipers and Eldritch Truth. Hey man, thanks. Uh, it is it is a real game. It is by Simon. It was actually a Kickstarter game a couple years ago. And it, ha it has been out for about a year now physical. This is how you reveal, how you get new missions, is you have to fulfill these start requir these requirements. So, Star of the Hunt is what we're doing right now, so we, you get a reveal card one. In move on the Courtyard Land for card five. Occupied House for card eight. And Ransacked House for card twelve. So, and that would, uh, if you're ever wondering how well you set up stuff, this is how. It tells you what image you're supposed to use. And random, you're supposed to randomize which slot they're in. But this is all the tiles you use. Actually, those name tiles are almost all going to be required for purposes of missions. And then the central lamp, this one up here, is always in the game because it is main game. I just completely messed that over. So, so of the Scourge, you must take the streets of Central Yarnum. The numbers of Scourge beasts grow and we must leave no area unchecked and uncleansed. We should also gather the information we can from the surviving townsfolk. Perhaps they can grant us insight into the cause of this sudden infestation. In the move on the central lamp tile, once you've collected at least two insight, I can reveal card two. Two insight is you obtain from side missions. So in order to continue, that means I'm going to have to find two of these and reveal them. So we can start. Let me put both these guys over here. Uh, you can see a list of actions over here on the right side. So, 
you can spend a card, you are going to shuffle up. You're supposed to draw three. I find it much, much less of a pain to do four. And how it breaks up, I'm saying I can get the fourth card in this draw. But Amish, what if I want soup? Make up, there's all four. So, um, the deck is made of three of four different types of cards. There is a stagger, a draw of one, a dodge, and a plus one damage. There's three of each. So you can also tag the card count on what you have left. So. so you can spend a card to attack, which is you will place it on your weapon slots. You can move two spaces. You can interact with stuff. You could flip your weapon. To transform it, or you can go to the dream. I am going to personally stick on this one for this one. You, um, when you start, you get to also choose which uh, form you start on. I'm going to do on um, both of these are my forms I'm going to start in. So we get to start, and I'm going to have Hunter Axe being the start player here. So he is going to discard a card. I'm going to discard a stagger to move two spaces, so it'll be one. Take the top tile. I just realized. Let me make sure this got set up right. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm supposed to have two more tiles. Just a little bit. I'm supposed to have two more tiles in here. So There's supposed to be eight tiles because it's um, hunters times two. So, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and the um, hunter's symbol, the hunter's emblem, uh, represents um, player count. So that represents how players are. So now we can draw. So not in land location. This is not one of the land locations, so I don't get to move stuff. Hey, buddy, come here. Uh, I'm gonna place the tile this way, and so I'm gonna just stock the tile, and so I come in this way. For one, here for two. So minions, I have Hunter's Mob. So let me get these enemies real quick. I have mobs, minions, scourge beasts. Then I need a treasure chest. So, so we look at our thing. Hunter minions are the red, so which matches the symbol on this tile. So Hunter minion is drawn. That's not the right thing. There you go. Yep. So I need to get these spawn bags real quick. Okay. So Hunter minion is going to come onto the board. You'll notice he has five health, and he attacks. Either slow or with fast. This Bloodborne, compared to the Dark Souls board game, which is by Steamforge also, which is about two different companies, um, the Bloodborne one is based around speed. So I want to often try to hit him with uh, medium or faster. And this is the enemy action discard pile, the enemy action deck. This determines how the enemies will work with you. There is three basics, two special, and one ability in the deck. So, there's my two spaces, so I'm actually going to play a card now. And I'm going to actually play a draw one here. We're going to do it on this. No matter what, I'm going to get staggered if he draws a special. And he drew a special. So. Duh. Okay. So he, it's a fast for two damage and stagger. Stagger, can, stagger cancels anything slower than it. So yellow will cancel orange and red. Orange will cancel red. If you can go above yellow, you can go below red. But for all intents and purposes, I'm going to say fast, medium, slow. So. He staggers me and he hits me for two. 
I can't dodge it because it is actually faster than my slots. To dodge, it would be at the same speed or faster. So, I can't dodge because my fastest is a medium and I can't get out of the way in time. I dodged too late is what it's technically called. Now, he has me for two. And my attack is canceled, so I don't do a three. And I don't get to draw. So, I'm going to try to hit him again. I guess I'm actually going to go for the stacker on the medium. And he got the special again. So he just hits me for another two. So I'm down to two health and haven't hit him once. Use two cards on it. Um, I'm going to end his turn. So, I have to get the end of my turn. So he's going to draw another card. He does his basic. Now, I can either shoot the basic, which automatically cancels it. Or I could just get out of the way. I think I'm just going to get out of the way. Slow and slow at the same speed. So I get out of the way. And I don't use my pistol. So... That went to crap for the Hunter's Axe user. However, it is now the Saw Cleaver. He's going to move. He is going to move one, two. So they're in the same we're in the same space now. I'm actually going to discard this Dodge card. So cards with Stagger deal plus one damage. So I'm going to do this for a three, trying to hit for a three on a medium. He no longer has any specials. Because he's already drawn both of his special cards. He draws his basic, which is a slow for three damage. I'm actually just going to parry this. So I shoot him, it cancels the attack. And I hit him for two plus one because of my ability. So I hit him for three damage. So he takes the three damage to the face. I really do not like where this is. This health bar is. I can raise it, but I can't. Well, I technically can, but I really can't. Okay, and then I'm going to play this other stagger card here. Ability. Add slow before hunters attack. I am at fast because I'm uh, one of the three arrows. So one damage plus one from the stagger does kill him, and I he does not get attacked because he is dead before his attack goes off. So. Killed an enemy, so I gain an echo. And then these cards do stay. Um, I'm just gonna move over here. Except gain this on my chest. I'm actually gonna keep this. Actually, I'm gonna use this. Actually, I'm gonna use this card to transform. And what the transform does is it clears your board, and you flip over. So, enemy turn. Boom! Well, look at that. There is no enemies. Or which way if you get a token to put it on there. So I keep thinking that actually has the token on it, and it doesn't. So, all the way, by the way, if it ever reaches the end of the board, it's auto game over. Uh, and when it hits the red spots, it resets the board. So everything that's limited, so the enemy spawns, the chest, all that stuff will come back. So. And again, I'm actually going to have him go first this time. You actually get to choose your order. This is actually one of the few games that you actually get to pick. Thanks to the tab, Sass Master. I'm actually probably going to do this for about another... Probably do this for another couple of rounds to kind of show everything. Before, we get into, before I get to having any campaign spoilers. So. He's going to be... He's actually going to go first. He's going to go... One card, pick this up, which actually gives a consumable. Got cold blood, dude. Also, uh, make sure you always draw back up, because you draw back with fourth in the round. So, 
I got draw ones, I got stagger. I got two draw ones, a stagger, and a plus one. I should get one of these draw ones. Did you get that chest? I move one. So we move off of the space, so I get another tile. And this tile I'm going to put this way. Oh, look, conveniently, another chest. So one, two. I have a mob here because mob's on the purple slot. Oh, I just realized the sponsor right here. Oops. Anyways. And this mob comes here and this is going to follow me because I moved through its space. Mobs, if you look at the card, have four health. And they are mediums. They use a lot of medium attacks. Actually, I just realized I should discard the stacker. So, shh. I've got transformed. So, I'm actually going to go all in here. Go for heavy attack of plus one. But notice, actually, the deck didn't get reshuffled. So, basic. Just two damage. Because he is medium, he does hit me first. Then I slam him with a heavy card for four. So I get another echo. And this guy's off the board. Now, I do have the option to move again. I'm actually not. Actually, actually yes I am. Actually I'm going to. I'll move here for one. Another tile. And we got a Sethus Clinic. We got to use the name tile, so I actually am. I'm going to double check that this is not a quest. So the one, and I don't think I, I don't think clinic was a quest. Uh, clinic a quest? No, clinic was not a quest. I have no idea when what I put that. Because that's chapter two set up. That's chapter three. And I can send cars we haven't got to yet. So. Um. Yeah, I have no idea where that card went. So I need to put, I need to have this card next to me. So. So move one, two, one. Um. I'm not going to pick up that chest. I'm going to move two here. So I take both these cards and they go into discard. So that's sock lever done. Now it is the hunter's axe. He's actually going to move one up here. Odin Chapel is still not a requirement. One, two, and then one, two, and that's alleyway, which still is no requirement, I don't think. Two. Nope, alleyway isn't. So. Put the mobs on board. And I'm going to discard a draw of one. And this dodge. Yeah, I'm gonna use, get rid of this card. Ooh, actually, no, never mind. Never mind. Do this. I'm gonna gamble on him getting a basic. So deck flips over. It's shuffled because the deck was out. Amish, I reckon I was people that's supposed to break the game, dang it. So, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> nope, he just dies. Because my slot's full, so I can't actually place this dodge card. So, I die. So, track moves up one for my death, and it moves up another one for the end of the round. So, and I warp, I die. Come back to a lamp. At the end of the round, so...
So next round, all the, the whole board's gonna reset. So I need to be aware of that personally. So again, I'm gonna have Sarkleaf again go first. So one, two. Courtyard. Courtyard was an option. Was an option. It is number five. So it should be this top card. Okay, I want to try to find something real quick. One, there it is. So in a move on the courtyard land pile, which we just did. So card five gets flipped. Entering, you find a large mob of townsfolk, all gathered around a blazing pyre constructed in the center of the courtyard. Upon it lies a, lies a numerous scourge beast. Suddenly, from behind you, you're shining more infected as the mob begins to surround you. Surrounded with fog gates, so no one you can enter, but you can't leave. And then we got this. So I build card six. Place one insight on this card. So, insight. Um, the home mob is slain, so they remove tokens and heal all wounds. So. so basically, I have to kill this mob twice. I'm right here. Hunter mob comes on the board. On the slamp, and this, I have to kill him twice. I don't think I have the cards to do that, though. And because it's foggy in, I actually can't leave here. I'm gonna discard the stodge to transform. So I get back to this side. I'm going to draw with one of the fast slots so I draw one if my attack goes through so I don't get cancelled basic which is just two damage I don't have my pistol but I do draw a card so this gets flipped shuffled and I draw a card which is another draw one I do one. I'm only gonna do one damage to the mob. And I'm sitting at two health right now. So I actually am gonna be smart here and back out. So I'm going to burn a card. And I'm going to dream. I back out, go to the dream. Advance the track, so that enemy just got reset. Along with that mob. That mob. That minion. And the treasure chest. Hmm. So, I have two echoes with the soft lever. I can come up here and buy two cards. I'm actually going to grab this one. Get a new card. I guess I'll just grab both of these. Now, how this works. You... When you buy cards, you actually have to remove other cards from your deck. You will always have 12 cards in your deck. And personally, I'm going to remove this draw one and this draw one. Put both of these in here. So 
So with these, remove from the game. Hey Z, playing Bloodborne board game. I'm only gonna be doing a couple of rounds on this. I'm actually gonna be switching to Dark Side's Genesis. Because this is a very, very campaign heavy spoiler game. And even then, I started later than I was planning to, to do this today. So. so. It's health resets. That gets reshuffled. So, and then at the start of the next round, I will be coming back with the Sock Leaver Hunter. And I want this thing's head. So, anyways. I was actually going to move one, two. One, two. So I can discard two cards that I never drew. So I'm going to discard this. Um, actually... What you need to do when you die is reshuffle your deck. <laughs> Would probably help. Reset and reshuffle. I'm actually going to come back in with this rallying strike side. So one, two, three, four. Discard two to move. One, two. And I'm going to draw one. I'm going to try to draw one here. The basics. I am actually going to shoot that. So I get the draw. And I deal two to him. And um, by the way, he actually follows me. I just didn't move him. I'm gonna try to hit him again. This time I'm actually gonna go for this rallying strike here. Ability. Flip another enemy action, it gets plus one speed and it gets plus one damage. Special, so now it is fast. So it actually will knock me out. And because it is fast, I actually cannot dodge it. So, ow, there's three damage. And it staggered me, so my attack does not go through, therefore I do not get the heal. So I'm actually going to end my turn here. He is going to attack me. Basic. And I'm going to dodge out of the way, so I don't take anything. End of the round. He comes back on the board at a lamp. Of my choosing, he's actually gonna come back at this one. Now he's gonna come back at. Hmm. What lamp do I want to have him coming at? This is one, two, three. This is one, two, three. It's the same way. So we'll just keep him. We'll just have him come at center. Shelves up. So draw new cards. One, two, three, four. Also my pistol reset. Mm, that's not a really good hand. <laughs> that's really not a good hand. Move one. Then two. If you're one of these, I'm going to give you about both these dodge cards. Which actually probably isn't a good idea. Also, I come in on this side. So actually, now I'm gonna get rid of this draw one. So. I'm gonna put this plus one here. Again, this gets flipped and reshuffled. Special stagger and stun. 
Ha! Huh, I am faster than you. So I get out of the way and slam him for four, knocking off one of his lives. So, for right now, this card is dead. But it is his turn. He's going to get a free hit on me. Special, so he still does it anyways. He does two damage. Actually, he's going to hit me for three because I do not have a card to discard for stun. And Hunter is still going to be up here wailing on this, this guy up here. How much health does he have? He has three, right? He has two. A plus one here. Also, there's really no reason because he has two health. There's no reason for me to put waste a plus one on him. And he does basic. We can hit actually at the same time here, and I don't have my pistol to cancel it. So I take two. He takes two. He goes off the board. I survive with one health. <laughs> and I get an echo. I'm going to just kind of run around at this point with him. So, one. And there's Ransacked House. So, Claws Mob, Tendril is Scourge, and then Double Chest. And ransacked, if I remember correctly. Is a card. Right. That was my chapter one. So ransacked house is card twelve, which is this one down here. You enter the ransacked house, catch sight of a young girl hiding in the corner for the monster stalk her. When the deceased creatures are dispatched, she can be rescued. So I place a survivor on this tile. And then when you kill everything, uh, you get a talk to her. I am not doing that. Because I do not have the health to even attempt that. So Hunter Axe is going to dream. So dream, end of the round. So, I'm going to go to the dream. He has one card, he has one echo, and he's actually going to take the swift spell, swift card. He's going to remove one of his staggers. Because unlike the Sog Lever, he really doesn't have any reason to keep stagger cards. So he comes back from the dream, the pistol refresh, out of echoes with full health. And yeah, six is a very weird amount for health. Starting health. So going to start again with the sock lever. Try his four. Going to go with plus one. With two plus one, basic. But you're not going to kill him. I'm going to actually want to pistol this. Actually, no, I'm actually going to dodge this. So dodge, dodge clears away, and, I'm, and he misses. Hey, wicked. Welcome to Bloodborne the board game. So, I hit him for three, so he has one health left. So I'm going to go for a stagger on fast. No matter basically what he gets, he, he's not going to be able to kill me. So, basically, he's a medium, I'm at fast. My one damage will go through and kill him before he gets to go. So, that means... He is dead. So, 
these both go away. And card seven. It should be the Hand Lantern and the Ludwig Rifle Firearm among the hunters. Driven to frizzy by the early stage of the infection, the townsfolk are compelled to partake in the hunt, leaving the Rag King the Beast the play will be quelled as well. From the remaining, you gather what useful supplies you can find. So, get the Hand Lantern and Ludwig Rifle. Hand Lantern is in here. Right here. And Ludwig Rifle is in here. So, Hand Lantern is a, car a carrying item. Actually, I'm going to give that to him. It's the Hunter's Tool. So, you can carry as many consumables as you want, but they are related to whoever plays them, whoever collects them. Then every person can have two runes and two hunter tools. And Ludwig Rifle. I'm going to bring this up real quick. I do not like the guns in this game. Because they are all so useless compared to the pistols you start with that have the ability to interrupt attacks. So. Like this one, when, I move, when an enemy moves into my space, I could shoot them and do two damage. Which actually, by the way, does not kill anything in the game, by the way. Everything survives two damage. So it doesn't even really kill them. <laughs> also, now, this is actually a lamp. Uh, Hunter's Axe Boy Warped back here, by the way. Hunter's Axe Warped. So, one, two, three, four. Five, six. Ooh, that's one card. That might not, this might not be actually a good idea. Here. Let me see what cards I get. Three. Four. Actually, I can actually work with this. So when you do this, these three got discarded to move. This is ability. Yep. So I'm, I'm hitting a hunter's mob. Let me say that when I was doing this. Um, I'm hitting a hunter's mob, and his next move is plus one speed. And damage. Basic, I'm good. So, um, he is going to hit me for three. But I'm going to kill him. And the mob goes, then the wolf goes at the end of the turn. He has ability also. This is actually about to be bad. This is not basic. It is basic. So I'm going to flip the gun and cancel that attack. Now comes the problem. It reaches another red space, so the whole board resets at this point, and we would go again. So, this mob is going to come back here. This mob's going to come back here. Um, he didn't come. He didn't re need to reset. He didn't need to reset. Yep. So, and we don't reset. Which is that's health to right. So, as you just technically wasted that card, I, I forgot that <laughs> it resets at the end of that return. I was actually would just stay out here. That probably would have been a smart idea. I just didn't think that through. So, my, this is also is one of the two inside I need. So. And we'll just keep going like this until you complete all of this. All of these cards and long hunt, which there is, I think it's five cards deep, four cards deep, right? Yeah, four cards deep to complete this main mission. I bet you would move on to the next chapter and so on and so forth. There's three chapters per campaign with the final one ending in a boss fight.
Yes, I know, blah, blah, that's not what I'm here for. I'm just gonna talk about bosses real quick. So, bosses. I'm just gonna have to grab Cleric Beast because Cleric Beast is the boss for this level, for this campaign. So, grab Cleric. Okay, I don't think I can use this deck. So, how bosses work in Bloodborne, the board game? First of all, pretty mini. So, they work just like a normal one, so that they have their own dedicated deck instead of the shared enemy deck. So, uh, you would still draw a card and you attack them, and that tells you what they do. In this case, Cleric Beast would recover all the insights this for something else. That's not a good example. So, he would do a medium speed attack for four damage. It would target all hunters in his face. And you may, you could exhaust your firearm to place it inside on this card and it deals minus one damage per inside. That's how this fight works. So, once you deplete either 10, 14, 20, or 24, depending on if you have one, two, three, or four players, you would then, after you deplete that 14, it is not over. He will flip over, go to phase two, and you would start drawing from the phase two deck. Here's the, I think that's the same version, the same attack. Nope, well technically that's the same one. So, so this is Crushing Slam. This is again another boss, this is one of his phase two attacks. It is slow for six damage, which is a one shot. Because hunters only have six health max. Um, it cannot be staggered. If you dodge, you deal plus one damage. All the hunters in this space must dodge at slow or suffer two. So, if you dodge, the primary targets of the person that started this that, and is attacking him to cause him to draw this card would take six if he doesn't dodge, which is an automatic one shot. If they do dodge it though, they get to do a plus one damage. All the hunters in this space, so that's, so let's say I had um, Larry, the hunter's axe guy, in my space with me when I drew this card, he would have to dodge also, he would suffer two. So it's one and one, doesn't want one, one sharp whole part. And it would deal minus one per token on cleric. And I reset the hunter much. So. Every round this is gonna go up. This is your timer. If it re ever reaches the end of this, you have one more round, and then it is game over. You lose the campaign. I just go reset all the way back to chapter one. Whenever it hits a red space, it resets the board. So how you just saw me um, have to respawn all the enemies. Um, every so every time you would die, end of the round, or someone visits the dream you end up having to advance the tracker. Once it gets far enough, well, it's, well, you're kind of done. That is how Bloodborne works. I'm not going to play the whole campaign. I just forget how long these campaigns are compared to the Dark Souls games. So, I will be back probably about 10 to 15 minutes and we'll actually go into some Dark Side. So until then, hope to see you all in a bit. Bye. Also flip the table.
<laughs> Everything returns to the void. <laughs> I didn't see how many people I just raided with. 